ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين عباد الله يقول الله تعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله ان الله خبير بما تعملون ثم ما بعد my dear respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته Today, Bihidnillahi Ta'ala, I would love to talk about very important topic, which is how to bring the blessings in your house, how to bring al barakat to your family, to your kids, especially our children, how to treat them, how to bring al barakat and to be to make sure that their future bi idnillah ta'ala will be blessed future that their future bi idnillah ta'ala will be better your future even how to make that a lot of parents are sacrificing a lot of issues because of their children but somehow because they are not following the rules which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about, they are wasting their times, putting from their efforts, from their money. But in the end of the day, subhanallah, sometimes it doesn't work. For how to make sure that bi idnillahi ta'ala, Allah will make your children as a blessed children bi idnihi ta'ala. Focus with me bi idnillahi ta'ala in this 30 minutes. I'm asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to accept all of us now ala kulli shayin qadir. I'm talking today to four categories of people. None of you, none of us out these four categories. For you're gonna be one from these categories which I'm addressing today. The first category, those who are still single and those who are divorcee and they would love to get married. That's the first category of people. The second category, those who already married, but they are raising up their kids. They are in the process, and they are growing and raising their kids up. And the third category of people, those who raised their kids, alhamdulillah, but there is some issues with their children. Now they are, <coughs> You know, adults, but they have problems. And they still feel something in their hearts. And the fourth category, those who raised their kids up, and alhamdulillah, they are perfect adults, and they are great adults, and they are living today with their families. Fa'ikna, you will be one from these four categories. Each category, I have message for. So focus with me. I'm asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all of us and this advice for myself first and for everyone here. First category, those who are single or those who are divorcee and they would love to get married very soon, inshallah. I have advice for you, my brother and my sister. The advice is you have to choose a proper and good spouse for you because of your future, because of your children, 
you want to have blessed children, you have to start from now. It's not after you get married. You have to start the process before you get married to choose a good and proper spouse gonna help you to raise your kids up in the best way and to have blessed the children ta'ala. This is step number one. You have to choose a good and proper spouse. But how, ya Sheikh, I have to choose that? How can I choose a good spouse for me in this crazy world which we live now with this materialistic life? How to choose a good and, spouse, and, and proper spouse? It's so difficult and so hard. Al Islam does not leave anything except it shows it. You have to look at Al Akhlaq, Al Hamida, the manners. Before you get married, you have to look at the manners of your spouse, which inshallah will be your future spouse. You have to look at the manners. And the whole entire good manners are around 20 manners. Alhamdulillah, I talked about all of them in my previous khutbas. 20 khutbah. Al akhlaq. What about the generosity? What about the patience, as sabr? Is your spouse is generous or not? Is your spouse is truthful or not? Is he honest or not? Is she patient or not? As sabr, al fida, al tahammul. Is your spouse can sacrifice something or not? Subhanallah. What about the families? What about the parents? You have to look all these akhlaq, the good ones. You know why? Because an akhlaq makes you admire the person, admire the spouse, and you're gonna love, then you're gonna live. There is no successful relationship without love. Forget about it. Forget about it. You need, you have to have kind of love with your spouse before you get married. The halal ones, I'm gonna explain it now. But how to have love? You have to look at the good manners because these good manners will let you admire your spouse and love her or love him. Then you're gonna live with the mutual love which you have to have it before you start this long and difficult journey. You have to choose your companion from the beginning. Again, I'm talking to category number one. I'm gonna inshallah talk also about category number two, those who already married. But now I'm talking to singles. I'm talking to the divorcee ones. How to start your life? Because it is second life for you, the journey of marriage. Subhanallah. You have to choose an akhlaq, ya habib. After you choose an akhlaq, you're gonna admire. After you admire, you're gonna love. Then you get married. Ya Sheikh, how come that to love before marriage? It's haram. How come that to love someone before the marriage? Oh, now we have to talk about openly. <coughs> and how, you, how we have to look at our seerah, our examples. Al Habib al Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The messengers, the prophets, the sahaba. Let us learn from them something. Those who lived 100, 1,400 years ago. Because there is two kinds of love, my dear respected brothers and sisters. There is halal love and there is haram love. Halal love to feel something, to admire someone, something. Haram love to act with haram stuffs. I'm not talking about the haram one. I'm talking about the halal one. And because of the time, I have three examples for you. The first example, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and his wife. After Musa alayhi salam, with his subhanallah bodybuilding, he went to them and he helped them with his manner, with his akhlaq. He used to be in bad situation at the time, but he helped. He helped a lot. Then after they finished that, they went to their family. And one lady still thinking about Musa alayhi salam. She felt something in that time. What is the problem? No problem. 
But what is the next step? She went to her dad right away. Ah, now this is the halal one. If she does something wrong after that, that means she was making something not halal one. But right away, she felt something in her heart. She went to her dad right away. Inna khayra man al al amin. She was describing good manners of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam before they got married. There is no stigma for that. To love someone, to admire someone, to talk about his akhlaq or her akhlaq, there is no stigma for that if you make it in halal way, not haram way. Do not misunderstand me. I'm talking about the halal one. I'm bringing examples from our prophets and messengers alayhi salatu wassalam. But we have to do that. If you do not feel anything of your spouse and you get married from her, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you or her. But with my experience for 17 years now as an imam, with more than 500 cases, I'm telling you 90% from the divorcee cases which happened in my history, it was because of the did not have mutual love and respect before they get married. They got married on the way of the because of the habits and traditions. And it does not work anymore. And I'm talking now to my brothers and sisters, those who are still single or those who are divorcee and they wanted to have a healthy relationship. You have to feel something before you get married. And the wife of Musa told her dad that I feel something. He is strong. He is honest. He helped us. Please, oh my dad, hire him. We need him. We need his help. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Qasas, قَالَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا يَا أَبَتِ اسْتَأْجِرْ One from them just admired Musa alayhi salam. And she went to her dad and she said, I love this guy. Bring him. He is qawai, strong. He is ameen. Just, I need to bring him, to reward him. Oh Allah, subhanallah. Allah here is talking about the reward of a man. He did something for a woman and they weren't married. But he was helping out of respect, out of good manners. Then the lady wanted to make it a right way. She went to her dad right away and she talked to her dad. We wanted to reward this guy. He is Qawi al Amin. Allahu Akbar. Inni waridu an unkihaka ihda bnatayya hatayn ala an ta'jurani thamani hijaj. Oh my son, I wanted to give you one from my daughters because you deserve that. What do you think? And this is the mahab, so and so. This is the only story in the Quran talks about marriage, by the way. That's the first example because of the time. The second example from our Habib al Mustafa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad and Khadija sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa radiyallahu anha wa arda. Khadija, ummu al-mu'mineen. We have ummahat al-mu'mineen. Khadija wa Aisha, umm al-mu'mineen Khadija. The first love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Shaykh, you're talking about love on the member? Yeah. Because you know what? Because the story, the love story between Khadija and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is still alive. We are talking about it. They did not feel stigma for a halal love, for the love who lets you continue your journey with your spouse. Allahu Akbar, Khadija radiallahu anha sent Maisara, a servant, to Rasulullah sallallahu She hired him to run her business. There is no relationship before that. Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, go and run my business. And she sent her servant, Maisara, and she said, chase Muhammad, oh my Sarah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I wanted to know how he is dealing with my business. Then my Sarah traveled to, with him to Syria, to Sham. When they came back, my Sarah went to Khadija and said, he is good man. He did this and this and this and this. He was truthful. He was honest guy. He was treating people in the best way. He was a smart. He was good businessman or good, you know, merchant. He did this and this and this and this. Then Khadija radiallahu anha wa ardaha fell in love with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then she called Nusaybah. 
يا نسيبة go to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and tell him I want to get married from him الله أكبر هذا حبيبنا المصطفى are you more pious than the prophet هذا حبيبنا المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم خديجة loved him and he loves her then خديجة sent a messenger رسول نسيبة رضوان الله عليها and نسيبة went to the prophet Ya Rasulullah, Khadija wants to get married from you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah, now you take the love to the right way. You take it to the halal way, not to the haram way, and not to stop loving or do not love before the marriage. This way is bad. This way is not good. The way of al haq to feel something with halal way. Let me give you the third example. We have adilla, evidences. We talk Quran and Sunnah, and Sirah. Sahabi al-Jaleel, radiyallahu anhu arda mughif, and his lover, Barira. His lover, yeah, I said it. It's mentioned in Bukhari, and narrated by Abdullah ibn Abbas, collected in Musnad al-Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullahu ta'ala, that mughif was loving Barira so much, and he was begging her in the streets to get money from her. And he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah, tashaffa'li. I love Barira, but she doesn't like to have me as a husband to return me back because they divorced it for a while. And she was a foreign woman, but he was loving her. And he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah, I love her so much. I can't live with her without her. I want her from you to be mediator. Just go to her, convince her to get money from me. Why the Prophet ﷺ did not stop him? What are you talking about? You announced that you love in front of everyone? Be muaddab, be modest. He did not say that. Muhammad ﷺ went to Barira. Ya Barira, he loves you. Why you don't get money from him? He needs halal, he wants halal way. Then Barira radiallahu anha said, Ahuwa am? It's a command from you? Or from Allah? He said, no, it's not Amr, it's not Wahy, it's not revelation. Then she said, then Ya Rasulullah, I don't love him. I cannot get married from him. Yes, he loves me, but I don't love him. Then what the Prophet said? What the Prophet did, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imagine if this story happened nowadays in some, you know, back homes or something. They would just right away force the woman to accept the marriage. It's a Sahabi, he loves you. What's going with you? You love him after marriage, go. No, he did not do that. He told her, Ahsanti ya barira, fala zawaja bighayri ihsas. There is no marriage without feelings. You don't feel anything for him? Okay. There is no marriage. I feel bad, by the way, for Mughib, but she doesn't love him. And he did not get married. And that's it. Hadihi siratuna. This is our seerah. This is our Quran. This is our sunnah. For the conclusion of the first point of me because of the time, I'm still talking to the first category, the single ones, the divorcee ones, those who want to get married and have blessed children. You have to choose your spouse in the properest way. You have to feel something. You have to look at al-akhlaq before you get married. This is my point and the conclusion here. You choose al-akhlaq, you admire it. You feel something, you take it to the right way and you get married ala kitab Allah wa ala sunnati Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the first category because of the time. Let me go to the second category. Those who already married, alhamdulillah, and they are raising their kids, which is, I think, 90% from the attendees. Listen to me carefully. I'm your, you know, younger brother. But I had experience, more than 17 years, alhamdulillah, with the masajid, with the Muslim communities. But listen to me and take my advice, and I'm advising myself first. First of all, ya akhir habib, and also our sisters, and those who are watching us, let me tell you something, you have to do it now. First of all, if you have love, still have, alhamdulillah, you maintain it. If the love got decreased, you raise it up again, you, you increase it. If there is no love at all, make the love. 
Listen to me. First of all, if you have the love still, Alhamdulillah, maintain it. How to maintain it? Yeah, Wallahi one secret. To maintain the love which you have, you have to take care and you have to share. Caring, sharing. Without them, forget it. About the love. You're gonna lose it. You're gonna lose it. It doesn't matter how much you love her, it doesn't matter much how much she loves you. If you are not taking care of her, if she does not sharing with you, there is no more love. I'm telling you. <coughs> sharing, caring. This is the secret to maintain and to keep the love which Allah provided you. Because, you know, it's so hard now to find this kind of love. I'm telling you. And my nasiha for our sisters, for our sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with you. Wallahi, the secret is between your hands. You know, sometimes they accuse me that I'm defending women rights. It was like accusation, subhanAllah. I love this accusation because Rasulullah did it. He said, Istawsu bin nisa'i khayran. Alhamdulillah, I'm defending the women rights. But now, listen to me, O woman. Especially those who are alive, the thousands who are watching. Just listen to me. Wallahi, the secret of any successful marriage, it is between your hands. You have the lead. You can turn it on. You can turn it off. If you look at the goodness of your spouses, Wallahi, you will have great relationship. If you make yourself blind on the goodness, and you just focus about the badness. Wallahi, if he is Angel Jibreel, it won't work. I'm telling you. I'm telling Nasiha, my advice. Take it and throw it. I'm advising every single sister. Wallahi, the secret of the success, especially when talking about marriages, it is between your hands. It doesn't mean that I'm not gonna blame men. I'm gonna blame men now. Just I'm talking about this secret. With my experiences, Alhamdulillah, more than 500 cases. I'm telling you. Yeah, I faced 500 cases, divorced cases. I, I faced them. I know what's going on. Yeah, this is the secret. Yeah, but again, the first thing that you keep your love. How? Sharing and caring. And the woman, those who are leading, they have to focus about goodness. That's the first issue. Then the second thing, what about if the love got decreased? There is no love like before, Sheikh. We were loving each other to the most. But now, you know, now, now my brother, my sister, go ahead and try to bring this love back. How? You have to spend time, money, effort. Without these three things, forget about it. I'm gonna give you a short story. Happened. I was talking about marriage stuffs in Saudi Arabia like 10 years ago. Then I said one story, great story. Someone wants to make something for his wife for years and she doesn't accept anything from him until he believed at that time that he has to make something for his wife that she loves. And she was loving to camp. Okay, go to the desert, stay there like two days, three days, smell fresh air, barbecue something. She was loving that. And he made this story. He went to the desert at night without her. Then he was digging the letters of her name, letter by letter, subhanAllah, a big horse, you know, drawing her name on the sand. And he brought more than a thousand candles. And he put all of them in these big holes. And he brought her without, you know, her attention. And he just lit the candles. And he just showed her and surprised her, her name in the middle of the desert. It's like a romantic, subhanAllah, scene for his wife. How much money he spent? A lot. 
How much time he spent? A lot. How much effort he put? A lot. But he was doing this for one thing, to bring the love back. And she appreciated this so much. And Alhamdulillah, the relationship become better than before because of one idea that he did it for his wife. Subhanallah. Yeah, either to maintain the love or you have to increase it. Last thing, what about if there is no love? No love, a lot of my brothers and sisters, especially those who get married before, they get married without love. My auntie knows this, you know, girl, I went to her, I saw her, then we got married, then I knew her after, or she knew, knows me after that. You know, there is no love. What is the solution? The solution, you have to make the love. How the, the love got made. How people are making love. You have to admire something good in your spouse. And will never happen except if you look at the goodness. Either she is cooking well, or she is beautiful, or she is patient, or you can control yourself in the time of anger, or you are a brave guy, you helped her a lot. Yeah, I mean, for sure, there are goodness. For sure. You have to make the love step by step. Look at the goodness. And try to admire yourself with it. And wallahi, the love will come. Because this is the only solution for you. Subhanallah. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا ثم توبوا إلى إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We still with category number two, those who are married but they are raising their kids. How to have blessed children? I said the first thing that you have to maintain the love if it's there, or to increase it if it got decreased, or to make it if there is no love. That's the first thing. The second thing you have to make du'a for your kids before you have them. From now. If you still do not have kids, but you are married, hurry up. If you have them, hurry up. Make dua for your kids. Subhanallah. Sayyidina Zakariya alayhi salam said, Rabbi habli dhurriyatan tayyibah. Oh Allah, give me a tayyibah dhurriya, a kind dhurriya, a good dhurriya, a good kids. He was saying this dua. Subhanallah. Allah bestowed him Yahya. And listen to the seven descriptions of Yahya. First of all, Ya Yahya, khud al kitaba bi quwa. Allah gave him prophecy, nubuwa. Then, wa ataynahu al hukma, sabiya, ruling. He was a ruler. He was a nabi, he was a ruler. Then, wa hananan min ladunna, softness. When he is treating his parents like what we need now from our children, to be soft. Allah said, wa hananan. Hanan fi al-lugha al-arabiya. It's mixed between love, mercy, compassion, sympathy. That's Hanan. Allah gave it to Yahya. Just his dad was calling Allah, making dua for his future son. Rabbi habli dhurriyatan tayyiba. Yeah, okay. Hanan and min ladunna. Ya Allah. Hukm. Ruling. Prophecy. Then Hanan and min ladunna. Zakatan. Purification. Allah purified him. Wa kana taqiyya. Taqwa. وبرًا يُزبار بوالديه وبين بهم ولم يكن جبارًا عصيا. He wasn't a disobedient. سبحان الله for his parents. الله أكبر. سيدنا يحيى عليه السلام. A lot of examples. Unfortunately, I don't have time to continue. But let me just end with the third thing we said: maintain the love, increase it, or make it. Then make dua for your future kids. Then the last one. That you have to teach them Al Islam wa Arkanuhu. Taban wallahi, I, I would love to have time to say with you about these points because I didn't even talk about the third category, those who already married and they raised only their kids, but they are not good kids, they are not good adults now, how they treat. And the fourth category, which those who are married and they raised up their kids and their kids are great. Is there anything that 
they have to maintain and continue? Yes, but I don't have time for that. And unfortunately, this is long.